So talking about the first topic on the mobile automation testing with APM, we are going to talk about what is APM. So in short, APM is an open source, open platform, and a cross technology mobile testing automation framework using which developers and testers can bypass the process of manually creating tests for each device. Rather, they can do it using the APM server, which can relay the instructions directly to the device from a generalized testing script. Now, although APM started as a mobile only testing framework, but it has now evolved into an open source project which can not only automate the mobile applications, but it can automate uh, applications on any platform, including browsers, desktop applications, uh, television applications, and a lot more. Now, talking more about APM, it is basically an HTTP server, uh, which is written in Node.js platform, and it comprises of a REST API which is basically implemented from the Selenium WebDriver API. So you can consider the Selenium WebDriver API as the base on which the APM platform has been built. Also, it works on a client server architecture and APM uses the available WebDriver client in order to trigger any particular tests on any application. Now talking about the popularity of APM, so APM is one of the most popular mobile testing automation frameworks. And why it became popular is because of the platform agnostic nature of APM, which means you can use the same test script to test all types of mobile applications, be it iOS or Android apps. Now, APM also supports automation testing of web applications, native applications and hybrid applications. Now we'll talk about the difference between all these three types of applications, but the fact that APM can support multiple programming languages like uh, Java, Python, Ruby, JavaScript, and a lot more makes it a very popular automation tool and has a huge advantage over other automation tools. Now, APM also enables us to test real devices, emulators, and simulators. So this was a brief about what is APM and what it can do. Now let's also talk about uh, what are the different types of apps and how they are built in different platforms and how APM can automate all of these different types of apps. So in order to understand this, we need to first understand what is a native uh, and what is a hybrid and what is a cross-platform application, right? So all of these apps have got its own benefits and uh, disadvantages. So talking about the native apps, so uh, the native app development uh, is basically building mobile apps uh, for specific platform using specific programming languages and tools. Now, uh, it has its own advantages, like uh, the performance is quite high, and also you get a better UI and UX designs. But the downside of native app is that you cannot reuse the code. So native apps are built with non-reusable code. Now, these are uh, mainly meant for rich media gaming apps or complex enterprise applications. Some of the examples of native apps are Google Maps or Spotify. Now, coming to the hybrid apps, right? So hybrid platform development, uh, it uses the web-based technologies to build mobile apps. And uh, they can basically share the backend code uh, rendered natively across different platforms. So it is built on reusable code. Now, what it does, is uh, it reduces the development time, it reduces the costs and efforts, but uh, on the downside, it has got inferior performance and uh, UX designs compared to a native app. Some of the examples of hybrid apps uh, are Gmail and Instagram. 
Now coming to the cross-platform apps. So again, uh, cross-platform uh, applications are built on reusable code and they enable organizations to write code just once and then reuse it to streamline mobile applications uh, across different platforms. Now this approach, uh, it speeds up the time to release the apps into the market and uh, it also reduces the development time and costs. One disadvantage of cross-platform apps, uh, it sometimes becomes difficult to integrate it with the third-party applications. Some of the examples of cross-platform apps are Skype and Slack. Now coming to the different components uh, which are part of the APM project. So some of the main components are the APM core APIs, the platform drivers, the language clients, and the APM plugins. So the APM core APIs, they contain all the APIs which are used within APM. These are all the standard APIs through which you can automate different uh, apps on different platforms. Now, uh, APM also consists of different platform drivers. Okay, so uh, iOS uh, would have its own driver, uh, Android would have its own driver, a browser uh, would have its own driver, right? Using these drivers, uh, APM can drive the automation on a specific platform. Also, uh, we already know that we can build APM automation using different programming languages. Now, this is possible using the language clients. Now, it could be uh, .NET, it could be Java, Python, or any other language for which we require a client-side library using which we can develop uh, different tests uh, for automation of different mobile apps. And finally, uh, APM also has got different plugins which can help you with uh, different tasks uh, which you want to automate on different apps. Now, let's talk a little bit about how APM works. What is the internal architecture of APM? Now, as you can see, some of the components which we talked about are present here as well. So, uh, APM server is the core component of the APM architecture. It is written in Node.js and it runs on uh, a machine or it can also run in the cloud. So what does the APM server do uh, is it receives the request from the APM client libraries via a JSON wire protocol. And then it invokes the mobile driver, either it is Android or iOS to connect to the corresponding native testing automation framework, which can then run the client operations on different devices. So here you can see there are two automation frameworks. For Android, we have got the UI Automator 2. For um, iOS, we have got XCUI test. And then uh, these can be used to run uh, different automations on the Android or the iOS devices. Now coming to the left side of this whole architecture is the client libraries. Now these client libraries, uh, they request the server to start a test automation session. Uh, this command is sent via, again, the JSON wire protocol. So the APM client libraries, they can span across multiple languages such as PHP, Java, Ruby, JavaScript, c -sharp, or Python. Now talking about the JSON wire protocol. So in this whole architecture, the APM client communicates with the APM server with this JSON wire protocol. Uh, it is developed by the web driver developers team and it enables developers to access standard and predefined endpoints via a RESTful API. Also, uh, you have to remember that all of this communication is happening over HTTP uh, and it is sending the request to the HTTP server. Now, uh, talking about uh, the APM drivers, right? So APM we know is a platform agnostic and technology agnostic, but to effectively manage different platforms, APM uses multiple drivers and uh, converts APIs into automation sessions for corresponding platforms. Now, some of the platforms are UI Automator 2 and XUI Test, 
Some of the others um, are WinApp driver, which you can use for Windows device testing. And then there is Espresso, which can be used for also Android device testing. Now, uh, apart from this, there are also automated testing frameworks, right? So APM uses the native automated testing frameworks to run client operations on different testing devices. Now, what it does is it connects with the bootstrap. Uh, either it could be bootstrap.jar for an Android device or bootstrap.js for an iOS device. It acts as a TCP server and performs all the test commands on the different devices. Now, these testing frameworks uh, for Android, uh, it is UI automator framework. And for Apple or iOS, it is XUI test framework. So to summarize, uh, whenever we begin an automation test session, the client machine sends a request to the APM server via the JSON via protocol. The test code can be written in any programming language, uh, either Java, C Sharp, or Python. The APM server then creates a new test automation session and uh, it invokes the appropriate iOS or Android drivers. When the APM server connects with the corresponding testing frameworks, uh, it can begin to interact with the bootstrap service, which is running on the specific mobile device to perform all the different operations, just as a normal user would do. So this is how the whole APM framework works. And this is the whole architecture where you find the different components uh, are involved to build this whole architecture. And then all of this can work together to uh, start or to run the automations on different mobile devices. That's all for this particular video. If you have any questions, then please leave it in the comments. If you like this video, then please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.